Hello. Today I'm going to do a little experiment and see if I can successfully cook rice in a thermos. I've seen a lot of other videos on YouTube of people trying and it seems like they never get it right. So I'm going to take a crack at it and see how it goes. I would recommend getting yourself a good quality thermos, one with a stainless steel interior rather than glass. And this one is perfect because it has a very wide opening at the top. And it works much better for the purposes that we're using it for today compared to a small uh, opening at the top, which is meant more for coffee and hot liquids. So we've got our thermos, measuring cup, and some jasmine rice, and some hot water. Can I talk about this little teapot for a moment? This is made by Sea to Summit. I hope you can see that on there. It has a three and a half cup max capacity, but I definitely put at least four in it and it works fine. It's called the X-Pot. Sorry, I'm waiting for the camera to zoom in. X-Pot. <laughs> And uh, this I got from REI, and it's definitely not cheap. It was, I would say, at least $40 when I purchased it from REI. But I must say that when I purchased my original one, the top, uh, which is plastic, started to bubble after a few times of using. And so I brought it back, and that's one of the beautiful things about REI. They will take anything back pretty much and I think they take it back within I don't know if it's a year or two years either way pretty good deal and so they replaced it free of charge and I have had no problems with this one with the new one so the sides are silicone the top is plastic and the bottom is aluminum uh, when this is not in use it's the whole purpose is that it's collapsible and it folds down very small which is nice so I do recommend this product, and I also recommend that you buy it from REI if you can. So why would I want to cook in a thermos in my van? Uh, well, it takes up a lot less fuel, um, especially, well, depending on what you're cooking, but especially something like a grain or a bean or something like that. Uh, you basically all only have to bring the water up to a boil and then put them inside the thermos and let them sit there. If you were to cook rice on a stove top or dried beans on a stove top, you're gonna have to let it sit on the flame for quite a long time, you know, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, maybe longer. Uh, so this is a, a much more efficient way. Um, and you would wanna do that in a van, especially if it's warm out, because you don't wanna heat up your van by uh, cooking something for a, an extended period of time and also the moisture issue because there's going to be a lot of steam coming off of it and um, maybe in the middle of winter and it's very if it's very dry you might enjoy some of the uh, steam but most of the time you do not want moisture or steam in your van it's uh it's a bad thing it leads to mold so when you cook rice traditionally you would use a two to one ratio so it's two parts rice i'm sorry two parts water to one part rice when you use a thermos you don't lose all the steam like you do when you cook on a stove top so you want to reduce the amount of water and so what i'm going to do is half a cup of rice to approximately three quarters cup water and it is an experiment we're gonna see how it works out. But from what I've read of other people experimenting, that that may be a good ratio. So let's try. So from what I understand, the most efficient way to do this is to preheat the uh, thermos with hot water and let it sit for a few minutes. So that's what I'm going to do here. So what we're gonna try is adding the rice to the water. That's my half a cup of rice added to about three quarters cup of water. Boiling water, that is. 
just gonna stir it just a little bit. And we're gonna let it sit on the flame just until it comes back up to boil. I'm also going to add a little bit of sea salt. Okay, that's come back up to a boil just about, and it smells amazing already. It smells like popcorn almost. That beautiful jasmine rice. Okay, so I'm going to turn off the flame. So we have our preheated thermos, and we have our rice and uh, water, and I'm going to carefully put that into the thermos. So the rice has already soaked up quite a bit of the water, and I'm going to have to use a little spat or a little spoon here. I don't hurt myself. Be careful of steam burns. They are some of the worst burns you can get it's from boiling water or steam. Okay. And then we're just going to seal it up. So after you have the thermos sealed up tight, you want to have it rest on its side. It gives the rice uh, its best chance to make contact with the, the hot water. And we're going to let it rest on its side like this for about two, two and a half hours. And we're going to see, uh, see the results. Stay tuned. Okay, it's been three hours. <laughs> sort of lost track of time. So let's see how it turned out. Well, I have to say it looks pretty good. Can you see it? You know, uh, this is way better than all the videos that I've seen on YouTube of other people trying this. So, uh, let me try it. So far, so good, though. It's fluffy. It's not overcooked. Let's see if it's undercooked. I can't quite tell until I try. Well, I'd say it's slightly undercooked, but still completely edible. I have to say I'm very happy with the way that this turned out for my first attempt. So next time what I would do differently is when I went to put the uncooked rice into the boiling water, I only let it sit there until it came back up to a boil, which was only about a minute. So what I would do is, once it came back up to a boil after a minute or so, I would leave it in for one or two more minutes in that boiling water, and I think it would have come out perfectly. So what I'm going to do with this slightly undercooked rice is put it into soup uh, when I'm warming it, uh, just a couple of minutes before it's ready to serve. And I think I'm also going to make a little bit of fried rice. So this rice, being a little undercooked, will do perfectly in either of those. So thank you all for watching, and bon appetit!